This episode, the marks of the church, how they bind us together, what that means for all of us here on earth. The Catholic Underground starts right now. Hallelujah, my friends. You have hit the play button on the Catholic Underground, the podcast cutting through the noise and bringing you the topics that matter again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. It is uh, Easter tide whenever we're coming to you on the air. It's episode number 445. If you're keeping score on your little scorecard at home, I'm Father Chris Decker, a priest of the Diocese of Baton Rouge here in Louisiana, and joining me, Kathleen Lee. Kathleen Lee Ooh, I is... I looked in the wrong place. Oh, it's a, I know. Kathleen is sitting in a slightly different yes. zone. Yeah, your camera is... I automatically went to another camera, but yeah, there you here go. I am. That's right. <laughs> and Kathleen is sitting there because Olivia is on assignment this yep. evening, a self-care assignment, and we hope that she's having some chicken soup or yep. something. Yeah. Actually, you know, I, if she, she's our Italian food critic. I'm hoping she's having a zuppa de pesce, a fish Ozzy, soup, Ozzy. which is my favorite thing to have when I'm under the weather. Mm. Some people don't like stinky fish. Um, yeah, I would say that I'm I not a stinky do, fish I do, and I especially fan. like it in soup form. So keep that in mind for Italian fish day. <laughs> Speaking of Italian fish, let's go up to the Jeff Star <laughs> One <laughs> near Earth orbit satellite and to our very own Jeff Blackwell, who is <laughs> running the audio for us. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Father. Good to be here. Yeah, always Another glad week. to have you. I happy know. Easter. Yeah, happy Easter to you. And we keep saying it for the next, well, I mean, that length of 50 days, right? We're 50 right in the, on the, right. the march up to Pentecost. And then Ed Ball is in the ball pit. Yes, he is. Uh, switching the video for us on the video Hooray. feed. Yeah. So, all right. We thought that we would spend some time, since we are in the Easter season, talking about uh, the four marks of the church. Now, yeah. the four marks of the church are are these these kind of visible signs within mm. our confession of faith right. that that denote us as members of of the church that that tell us what the church is her attributes yeah. and uh, and why those are important for us who bind ourselves together as Christians yeah you know i think what's funny is that we oftentimes say the creed in mass mm-hmm. and there are parts of it that we are just like i have no idea yeah. why we say that well, but and here I think, we go. You know, and this is this is part of that. And yeah, it's at the very end. And I right. think that some folks are just ready to get to the offertory so they can sit down. Right. Because <laughs> right. it comes at the end. The marks of the church yeah. come at the very end. Yeah. But, you know, I was talking to some of my students. I know I say this a lot. But it's my students. Mm-hmm. Um, you and, got them. And I said, we were talking about what happens after Easter. And I was like, all right, guys, like what happened? Jesus died. And where did he go? And they were like, he went to heaven so <laughs> triumphantly. And I was like, no. Bring it back. And I was like, mm-hmm. do you ever hear in mass when we say, and then he descended into hell? And they're like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. In the Nicene like, Creed, he descended to the dead. Yeah. I'm and like, the Apostles' Creed into hell. Yeah. I was like, do you oh. like, do you kind of glaze over okay. that and think maybe it's a mistake and that maybe we don't know what we're talking about because they said he went to hell? No. Oh. It's part of like, and so these parts of the, of the creed of our profession of faith are things that make us who we are. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful part of our identity. But oftentimes as, as, not getting on a soapbox, but uh, as many times we as Catholics do, it's just something that we have memorized, kind of, or that, especially during the Mass, that we, okay, amen. Yeah. You know, but but these four marks of the church, um, when you really look at them, it's what gives us our identity. That's right. Um, and, and so it, it's certainly worth saying that the first mark of the church, that characteristic of the church, is that the church is one. Mm-hmm. The church is one, um, just like the fish on our screen. The church yeah. is one, mm-hmm. and uh, and the catechism tells us that the church is one for several reasons. Right, right? the church is one because of its source. Okay, it, it's the, the the source of the church comes from the Trinity itself. Yeah, right. We mm-hmm. we we didn't just kind of make ourselves up. Um, one afternoon, but rather uh, it is it is just as the Holy Trinity is a perfect unity of three divine persons. Um, we are also sourced from the Trinity. It's hard for us to imagine that, that the church itself is sourced yeah. from the life of the Trinity. Mm-hmm. In fact, we can say that, uh, that, that part of this is because the founder is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the second mission from the Trinity. So, so Jeff, think if you will, there are two missions from the Trinity. So a mission is like being sent out, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so one of those missions from the from the inner life of the Trinity, from the hidden life of the Godhead, is the sending forth of Jesus to be born 
uh, among us, yeah. to be okay. like us in all yeah. things but sin, the word to take on flesh. That's one of the missions from the Trinity. The Holy mm-hmm. Spirit would be the other one, the mm-hmm. sending of the Holy Spirit. And, and so because Jesus is our founder um, and we are, we are constituted in him, then, then we are, the church itself is one. And then, of course, also because the church has a soul, too, yeah, which is that second mission from, this, from the Trinity, mm-hmm. which is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I, when we talk about Pentecost and we talk about like, the, the early church and being sent out, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, look, this doesn't, this doesn't end with the apostles. Right. It wasn't like Jesus sent out this group of, of guys, they did their thing, and now bingo, bango, here we are. Yeah. This is a continual mission, a continual sending out. Mm-hmm. You know, that um, that when the Holy Spirit, you know, descends upon us, yeah, that we are, you know, like the apostles, filled with the Holy Spirit and sent out to do work. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes I can be very, uh, I can be a viewer of Catholicism. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, oh, that's nice. And what, ha- what does the church do for me and what does it provide for me and you know and watching what happens in the church yeah um, and oftentimes I forget that that mission spirit to to go out and to um, to to teach and to evangelize even though that's what I what I do you know I think uh, and maybe father you can speak to this as well um, the idea that um, you know even though it is what we do mm-hmm. sometimes it's not always it's not always my first thought or my first intention. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. And uh, I think sometimes we think that well, I am a Catholic, right? But Catholicism is not what I do, right? Mm-hmm. And that that part and parcel to our identity is is that oneness mm-hmm. uh, that we we are uh, visibly Catholic. We are right. visibly part of a church and visibly part of a community. And that doesn't end when I leave Mass on Sunday. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's a great temptation for us. Yeah, is, we compartmentalize. Is, yeah. We put it in a box. We put it in a one hour, you know, one hour mm-hmm. a week. Um, and we don't think that that oneness exists. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm sitting next to you at church, but if we happen to work in the same bi- building, you know, or, yeah. like, or we teach at the same school, somehow that oneness doesn't doesn't exist outside the doors of the church. Or yeah, yeah, we go to church. We go to the same church, right? You know, but we, we don't recognize the unity that's in that. Yeah. And, and then furthermore, we don't always recognize uh, the unity of other Christians, too, within yeah. us, right? Those who are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit right. are, are sharing in some way, and we'll talk about that in a minute, um, are sharing in some way in that oneness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, what I, th- what I love most about this, this idea of oneness in the church is that, um, you know, like, like you were saying earlier about the, the, you know, sitting next to somebody, mm-hmm. um, in what I do, I teach religion. So there are people that I teach with, um, who are also Catholic yeah. who oftentimes, and I, I would imagine, I don't know, you might get the same kind of interaction and lack of interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes I get really good conversations about people who are like, Hey, you know, you're Catholic, right? You're, you're, you, do, yeah. you do the Jesus stuff. Right. And, uh-huh. and a lot of times it's from people who are not Catholic. We have, yeah. I've taught with people, of course, who aren't Catholic and they have questions. Uh-huh. Um, sometimes it's from people who are Catholic, um, and to be a- to find their right. way into that. And to be able to have those conversations in like a, like kind of, um, like a, I guess a safe space of like, mm-hmm. okay, well I heard the kids talking about this. What, what is that? You yeah. know? Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about that, too, that can fuel those discussions mm-hmm. is the visible sign of that oneness w- within the Catholic Church yeah. is is not just in our creed or the celebration of the sacraments or the apostolic succession mm-hmm. that preserves the sacrament of holy orders. But if you go to Mass anywhere on earth, yeah. anywhere on earth, you you are experiencing that, that oneness, huh? that breathing right. with the same oxygen, if you will. Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes really cool to go to another part of the world, and not just to the United States, but another part of the world, and see that even though it may be in a different language right. or parts of it may be, there is yeah. a oneness there. Yeah. yeah, and if you're paying attention, you know exactly what's going on without mm-hmm. without being able to hear the words. We were talking earlier about one of my favorite parts about Spanish Mass. 
mm-hmm. because every time I would I would go to Mexico to do mission work, yeah. we had this phenomenal pre. I mean, just a beautiful voice, very very rich and very deep. And every time we get to forever and ever, mm-hmm. right? Por los siglos de los siglos, and I was like, yeah, like I I know what <laughs> I know what you're saying. That's I don't right. know what you're saying, but I know what you're saying. You know, That's right. and and the that is is um like a beautiful gift yeah. of you know, I am in another country. I have no idea where I am, but if I can figure out where a Catholic church is, mm-hmm. I know, I know that's, that's home. That's right. And oh, yeah. that these are my, that these are Beautiful. my people and that we have the same, you know, the same belief system, the same, you know, belief in the Eucharist and celebration mm-hmm. of the Eucharist. Uh, and that, that is a, a beautiful gift. Um, yeah. you know, to not only go from one country to another, mm-hmm. especially when they speak another language, but to go to even to one community within the United States or within mm-hmm. your own country to another community. And partaking of the same food. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. That, really that oneness thing. of being yeah. a part of that family yeah. and to come to the family meal, mm-hmm. you know, and to, and to sit next to someone who y'all aren't going to have a conversation out of this and understand, yeah. you know, a word you're saying, but to know this is, right. this is my people. And that's also a beautiful thing whenever the liturgy is celebrated well mm-hmm. and, and celebrated um, in a respectful and reverent manner is that you realize that you are partaking in the one sacrifice of Calvary. Yeah. Just as we are coming to, to, the, to the one meal that we as Catholics share together, we're also coming to the one sacrifice. We're coming to Calvary itself. And that's one of the reasons for the unity within the liturgical life mm-hmm. of the church. And it's really interesting that we say that because you'll know if you've ever been to an Eastern Catholic liturgy, so like Byzantine Catholics that are in union with Rome, mm-hmm. but have um, a slightly different liturgical life. Yeah it essentially still follows the same uh, the same pathway right but it's it's lived a little bit differently and so even if you go to 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 um, what we would call it mass they would call it the divine liturgy mm. if you go to the divine liturgy in the Eastern Catholic Church you're still going to be able to to work your way through where we are in the mass yeah. even if it may be um, in Greek or or if it may, there may be a few little additions and subtractions here and there in the liturgical life, you're still able to say, wow, we, we are still speaking the same language liturgically. Yeah. And that's a really beautiful thing. And, and Jeff, you're a convert to the faith. Yeah. Uh, of course, you're not a recent convert anymore. You're, you're actually a died in the world. 31 now. years yeah, that's old right. <laughs> in the church. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and so w- can you speak briefly about what that's like for, for, to be able to, to have a place where you're not getting um, something different at every ecclesial, at each building you go to, yeah. but you're able to, to kind of key in on something that's one whenever you go to exactly. receive Exactly. It's like, uh, um, and, and in the vernacular, if you will, we're all on the same page, yeah. but, yeah. Uh, but uh, no, it's that unity of souls mm-hmm. um, worshiping and directing our, our focus as you know, as uh, as a worldwide group, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, well, the the word Catholic itself mm-hmm. means yeah, uh, universal. It u- does, and universal. we'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. Oh, okay, because uh, that's well, one of the yeah. marks. Yeah. Ah, we don't want to okay. get ahead of ourselves. All right, but good, yeah, good. so we're talking about the, this oneness. But it's important to note that in the oneness, there's also room for diversity. Sure. And that's always the great, uh, the great little dance that that we do right. is the the one and the many. And how though we are many, we are called into yeah. a unity. Well, as we know, St. Paul used that imagery, right? We are one body and many parts. Mm-hmm. And just like in a, in a family, you, know, you look at your own family, you guys, I look at my own, we are not cookie cutter. Like, there are things that we <laughs> right. have in common. Yeah. But even between my, my two siblings and I, there's, there's great difference. Yeah. But I also know that when one of us is missing, you know, mm-hmm. our brother moved to, to Denver, um, and when one of us is missing, something is missing from the body, yeah. you know, from that family. And so, you know, we do have diversity. And there, what's beautiful about that is that um, with the different vocations, mm-hmm. um, the gifts that we bring, the different ministries that we have, um, the different ways to, to participate in the life of the church, uh, comes a place where you can feel at home, mm-hmm. you know, whether something is carved out specifically for you as, you know, as, you know, X, Y, Z, or, um, just how we participate in, even in the liturgy, right. You know, um, it's a place to be home. That's right. Um, and that's a beautiful, a beautiful image, a beautiful, um, feeling, mm-hmm. 
um, when we're all searching for a place to belong. That's know? right. And and that's the that's how the church speaks about it is that we do have many different vocations and many different gifts within the church, like St. Paul, to paraphrase him, you know, uh, a, a hand can't say to a foot, right. well, since I'm not a foot, then I don't have a place here. Right. But to be Catholic and to be a part of the church means that your particular vocation in life, whether you're married or, or whether you're single, whether you're a priest or a bishop or a deacon, you have a very important part to play yeah. within the life of, of that which, con- which constitutes the church. And, and you're essential to the functioning of the church because when you are baptized, you become part of that mark. Yeah. When people look at you, in fact, I, I was reading, I'm reading my pick of the week, and it talks about uh, a survey that was done around 1950 that, uh, that asked the question, what was it that made you consider becoming a Catholic. And 82% of folks that were, that were polled in 1950 said it was another Catholic. It was the visible witness Mm. of the Catholic that made me wonder what the church was about. Mm -hmm. And I I would say that even though it's not 1950 anymore, those numbers are still probably pretty high. When, when we see somebody living the faith and living it in a, in a courageous, in in a a fulfilled way, Mm -hmm. we go, I wonder what's going on there. You know, and if you don't mind me, uh, uh, Ed no. Ball uh, was my sponsor when um, I uh, went through RCIA. Again, this is 31 years ago. Yeah. And uh, believe me, I had tried all kinds of different churches, um, mm-hmm. interdenominational, non-denominational, and, uh, and then, of course, the brand names. But um, I, I finally asked him one day because I, I kept searching. And uh, I said, is there a way that I can learn? He said, well, let me, let me call the church and we'll find out. Sure enough, RCIA was starting the following week. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, it's very base. Uh, the, the RCA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, is it starts so that you can begin to inquire, so that you can yeah. ask questions yes. and you can see Catholics doing that thing they do. And it's the, it, that's what really attracted me. It's not like, okay, this is what we believe. Right. you got to believe that. Yeah. No, it was like, we're going to tell you what we believe yeah. and why we believe it. Mm-hmm. If you choose to join us, we, we, we'd love yeah. to welcome you. So. Well, it's, it's like whenever the, the Second Vatican Council was convened, what, uh, what Pope John and now Pope St. John Twenty-third, mm-hmm. um, wanted to do was to open up the windows of the church yeah. so that people could look in. And, and could look in with a sense of transparency and, and look in with a sense of wonder at that, that thing that Catholics do that's different, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and whenever you open those windows, you're, the, the church itself is able to encounter the world in a new way, mm-hmm. not to change what it believes so that it becomes indistinguishable from what's on the other side of the window, but to invite those on the other side of the window going, now what is right. this all about mm-hmm. in and, and that's what the rite of a Christian initiation of adults is, is yeah. an opportunity to look in the window yeah. and maybe yeah. put your foot in the door. You Welcome know? home. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. I love right. that. So that's the church's one. So mm-hmm. let's take a, a, wee little, uh, a wee little break and remind you that we are the Catholic Underground. <laughs> That's right. Uh, located here at the intersection of CatholicUnderground.tv, mm-hmm. uh, we are the Catholic Underground. We're the podcast uh, trying to cut through all of the noise and bring you the topics that matter. I'm Father Chris, joined with Kathleen. I'm Jeff still is, looking in the wrong place. It's okay. Like, yeah. You're still there. Uh, Jeff's up in space. <laughs> Ed is, well, we don't always know where Ed is. He's, he's somewhere in, in a hyperdimensional bypass yeah. running Ooh, video. Uh, yeah. I'm going to quote you on that. Yeah, you got to yep. build bypasses. Write so we've been talking down. about the marks of the church. The marks of the church are indeed uh, fourfold. There are four yep. marks that mark a Catholic. Huh? They're quattro. Uh, that mark our church. Mm-hmm. And the, the second um, mark of the church is that the church is holy. Yep. So one, holy. And when we talk about the church being holy... We have to talk about the source, just like we had to talk about the source of oneness of the church right. is the Trinity itself, the oneness that exists within that diversity of persons, that distinction of persons mm-hmm. uh, makes the church one. Well, it is indeed Christ himself who is the source of all holiness. Um, in fact, in the dogmatic constitution of the church, uh, Lumen Gentium, mm-hmm. um, uh, the, the, the document says that the one Christ is mediator and the way of salvation. He is present to us in his body, which is the church. So he is the source, yeah. not only of the church, but also of its holiness. Yeah. And to be called holy, that's one of those words that we use all the time, especially if we're 
trying to talk about somebody who we know is somehow different and a little bit closer to God than mm-hmm. we are, right? Don't we say, well, that person's holy. Yeah. Um, sometimes you say it pejoratively. They're a holy roller. Yes. You know? Uh, and w- we don't often use the word holy in a, in a holistic sort of right. way. Oftentimes, and I've been, I've been accused of this and I have also said, I'm like, well, aren't you just holy then? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Ooh, oh, you yeah. really are though. I'm sorry. Right. And so when we talk about holiness, <laughs> right. actual yeah. holiness, we talk about, uh, and you've heard Olivia say the word before, mm-hmm. kadosh, that right. The, the Jewish word mm-hmm. holy means set apart. Yeah. And not just set apart and put over here on a shelf, but set apart for a specific purpose. Right. And and for us, the church is holy because Christ is the one who births the church from his side, if you mm-hmm. remember. Um, St. John talks about this. The letter to the Hebrews talks about it, that it's from the side of Christ that the church is born. Mm-hmm. From the blood and water that flows forth, she is born. And, of course, we know that, that the water that... Uh, that is constituted from the side of Christ is the water of baptism, an image of the water of baptism. Yeah. The blood from the side of the Christ, of course, is is the blood in which we are saved and we are covered mm-hmm. and is also a sign to come of, of the Eucharist that we mm-hmm. receive as well. And so that is the, that's the source of holiness, of the being set apart. Mm-hmm. When we are covered by that blood, whenever we are covered in those waters of baptism, we ourselves are set apart. Yeah. And as Christ sanctifies his church, then then we too uh, are sanctified by the church herself. Yeah. And isn't that a desire of like of, of everybody's heart to be holy, to be holy, mm-hmm. right? To be set apart, to be, you know, different. I think a lot of uh, people in yeah. general um, have this desire to be different, mm-hmm. have desire to be special, have a desire to be, yet we fall into the the, well, we fall into what our world gives us. If right. we if we don't have a, a visible church mm-hmm. that tells us that you know you are indeed special, you are irrepeatable. God made you as you are, and God wants you to glorify Him for all the right reasons because He's God, because He loves you, and because you have something important to offer Him that only you can give back. Yeah. When we don't have that present in in a in a church. Mm-hmm then we always try to find it in other ways. And that's one of the things that we see happening now as our society tries to disintegrate itself by making everyone uh, kind of a little god unto themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you get all these isms that that are now people are trying to define themselves and they're trying to splinter into more and more little Mm -hmm. isms so that there are more and more little niches just to say, I I am here, I am important, I, I have value. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, it is within the the beauty of the holiness of the church that we discover our true value. Yeah. And our true value is is not our identities and our orientations and our lusts and and our fetishes even, things like that. Mm -hmm. That's not our identity. Our identity is first and foremost as one who has been called up into the life of God. And the church is that visible sign. So when we talk about being holy, that is, that's our desire. That's the desire of our heart. Well, now that, you know, when we talked earlier about what our vocations, our common vocation, you, Father Chris, me, Kathleen, you know, Pope Francis, you know. Even Jeff. Jeff, Ed, anybody. Your vocation is to holiness. Yeah is to live out, you know, the gospel message of Jesus Christ to, you know, to, to be a witness mm-hmm. to the one which we believe in right? and mm-hmm. to be a witness by not only checking the box and say, I'm a Catholic, but yeah. to live that life, to be that visible sign, that visible witness, you know, and, and, and holiness is, is hard. It is. It's very hard. And, you know, even when we look at um, the great saints that, mm-hmm. that, you know, that we recognize as capital letter saints, you know, capital capital S saints in our church. Um, it's easy to say, oh, well, their life, they were, you know, one with God. They were, you know, communicating with God every day. Many of them had visions and crazy stuff happened in their life. And But all of them mm-hmm. were human beings. That's right. And all of them were sinners. That's right. They had that in common with us. And so That's when right. we look at holiness, it's not an unobtainable no. It's not like you become, like you, you reach holy status, and ding, 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 and you've right. won the game. Yeah. It's, a, it's a constant striving yeah. for that. That's yeah. correct. A constant looking at our own life and saying, okay, 
you know, if I if if this is what it means to be Catholic, if this is what it means to be, you know, witness to Christ every day, yeah. how am I how am I living that out? And having the courage to say, this is where I'm not living right. it out. And that's that's yeah. why the sacraments of the church are there. So it's right. through the ministry of Mother Church, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord pours forth his graces mm-hmm. through the sacramental life of the church. So when the church teaches, when the church prays and worships together, when the church works together in acts of charity, yeah. uh, the visible sign of holiness we see is working through the church. Yeah. And so that's why I'm called to go to the sacrament of reconciliation Because if I'm called to be holy, I've got to reconcile with God for the times that I am not. I've got to reconcile with my brothers and sisters in the church and outside of it for the times that I am not. And so we we can't forget that not only have we been called to be holy by the church, but the church herself, because she is made holy by Christ, Mm -hmm. is given the power to make holy members and given the power to draw from this diversity into a oneness yeah. up into a oneness and that that's a real real great great grace you know yeah um in fact one of the prayers in the mass uh, before this typically before the sign of peace right mm-hmm. before the priest extends the sign of peace is look not on our sins mm-hmm. but on the faith of your church mm-hmm. and we're we're asking the lord and kind of begging the lord to say we we know that we're sinners yeah. but please lord make us holy especially as we're about to receive holy yeah. communion yeah. you know we're, we're going to receive you help us to be holy to be yeah. set apart for you and for you alone yeah oh that's a, such a like it's such a thing that i forget about you know and mm-hmm. i've talked about this i think i might have talked about it last episode right everybody can be holy comma but kathleen mm-hmm. uh-huh. yes absolutely you we're yep. like that's that's at our very you know vocational call very, the very core of our vocational call no matter what you know you do as a as a job or what you do mm-hmm. when you grow up or what you you know you want to be a priest you want to get married it's to be holy yeah um and i, I also and that mean, undergirds it all yeah yeah exactly yep the second vatican council once again says every catholic must therefore aim at christian perfection and each according to his station play his part that the church which bears in her own body the humility and the dying of jesus may daily be more purified, renewed, against the day when Christ will present her to himself in all glory without spot Mm. or wrinkle. We're part of that spotless bride, and so we're called constantly to holiness. We'll be back uh, with more on the other two marks of the church. You're watching and listening to The Catholic Underground. Stay right there. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To Thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To Thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of Thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Underground. That's right, Kathleen. Here we are. We're here now. I'm Father Chris. Yes. With that an imperfect jam- rhyme. That is some jams right there. Yeah, it's like a 1990s Christian rock. Like this is Ooh. what I would have listened to, probably, wow. and may still. You're you're a There's lyricist. There's no shame in that game. Uh, that was great. Ah, well, what do you know? You just gotta find a time signature yep. and stick with it. Yeah, I love it. Let's get to the studio. And, <laughs> and we try yeah, to do that. Out another one. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, speaking of finding a time signature, uh, you somehow found the time for the Catholic Underground. I'm Father Chris, joined by Kathleen. Jeff is in space, and Ed is in a subspace bypass. Yep. That doesn't sound But not because that he's in trouble. That doesn't oh, no, sound no, no. right. Like time out <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so we talked about the church being one, uh-huh. the church being holy. Right. And you'll remember from reciting the creed every week that the church is Catholic. Yes. Now this is an interesting one, Kathleen. Yeah. Because there's a capital C and a lowercase C we exactly. talked about Catholic. And yeah. you you certainly will uh, will be interested to know, and many of you do already, that we are not the only um, believing community of baptized believers. That's true. 
I use believers twice. It's all right. It's okay. We're not the only community of the baptized who use the Constantinopolitan Nicene Creed. Yes. Which, of course, as you know, is from the year 325. Mm -hmm. It was the Council of Constantinople and the Council of Nicaea yep. that honed in on this, this central core system of beliefs that we yeah. call the Nicene Creed today. It's our Wh common confession. Which is great because when you look at, when you start to look at the history of the church and we start to look at these councils, even though sometimes if you're not historically inclined, mm -hmm. they can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of them. There are. Um, but when you look, I mean, this we're talking about th about 300 years after the the death of Christ, you know, the, the church is, has, has had about 300 years to, to germinate. Yeah, right? That's a good way and to put some, it. And yeah. some, you know, the leaders of what was going on went, okay, Mm -hmm. Let's do, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. And yeah, and councils are usually called because there's a lot of heresy floating right, around. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that when when we say, you know, big C Catholic, yeah. This is what we this is what we mean, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, when I was little, I remember, you know, saying the the creed and and you know, one holy Catholic and I'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> Catholic is the best. Kathleen right? was always a proud Catholic. I know, I, I was. And I was also very just proud in general. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, when I got older, I realized, I was like, I think there's a printing mistake because this Catholic is not capitalized. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What does that mean? And um, and you, you realize that, that this is, that we're not talking about Catholic as in, you know, what we, the, the faith that we, the mm -hmm. church that we belong to. Well, it's to. interesting. It's one of those, it was beautiful both ends. Yeah. We are and we're not, but we right. are. Mm -hmm. So the, the church really, I mean, so let's let's dial her back. Okay. Um, Jesus mm -hmm. gave us the, the apostolic succession, right? He gave us his apostles. Right. His apostles were our first priests. They mm -hmm. were our first bishops. And the thing that they were supposed to do was to offer the Eucharist, right? So so whenever, whenever you do these things, whenever... You uh, celebrate the the uh, calling down of the Spirit upon the bread, and it becomes my body. Mm -hmm. When you call the, down the Spirit upon the chalice, and it becomes the blood of the new covenant. As often as you do this, everywhere you do it, yeah. it is done in commemoration, in memory of me, and not a memory that is like a, a thing that happens in the back of our head because it's history, but it's a calling forth into the now. And so Jesus gave us the apostles and gave them that specific mission and then also gave them the mission to to baptize and mm -hmm. to teach, right? So go and make disciples, yeah. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and commanding them to uh, observe all that I have commanded you or teaching them to, to observe all that I've commanded mm -hmm. you until I come back. And so this was the mandate of the apostles, right, to serve in that mode of baptizing, teaching, yeah. celebrating the sacraments. And so that was what the church understood herself to do. And St. Ignatius of Antioch in around the year 100, mm -hmm. so inside of a century um, from, from Christ's yeah. death, right? If he died in 33, yeah. so less than a century later, St. Ignatius of Antioch is calling this body of believers, this church, mm -hmm. this ecclesia, he calls it catholica. He calls it universal. Um, in, in his letter to the church at Smyrna. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the church, what's what Catholic means, rather than simply a denomination. Yeah. Right. Uh, the Catholic church yeah. is a universal body of, of Christians, mm. yeah. uh, of those who have, who have given their, themselves over to Christ in baptism and are trying to be disciples. I never heard it explained that way. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, and, and so it's important to note that, that the Catholic Church, as we have it today, is indeed the Catholic Church with a big C and a lowercase mm -hmm. C, mm -hmm. because the Catholic Church today is the one that maintains that line of apostolic succession. Right. So you can, you can trace all of our bishops from, from the Holy Father, from Pope Francis, all the way back up to Peter. Yeah. So all of our bishops in the church, they all trace themselves somehow to Peter. And Peter, of course, is the one on whom uh, the, our confession of faith is, is yeah. based. Yeah. And he is the rock. He is indeed the rock, mm -hmm. uh, the Petros. Yeah. Uh, and it's upon this Petra I will build my church. Yeah. We were, you know, talking uh, with my eighth graders about, you know, the structure of the church and, and the, 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 a little bit of the history of where it came from and, you know, about how 
when the apostles went out, it wasn't like they, you know, they had a, they had a moment, Mm -hmm. right? And I always think this, they had a moment where they could decide I could go back and be a fisherman. Nobody's going to want to try and kill me. Right. Or, (laughs) um, I can do what I'm I'm called to do and to go out. And, and when you look at, um, the spirit lit them up yeah. and, and out the, they and went. And then when you look at how they how they did that, like, mm-hmm. you know, when they would go into communities, how they would set up, you know. What pres- we would call a diocese. Presbyter, yeah, presbyters <laughs> and deacons. And, you know, it wasn't like, here's what I've heard about Jesus and what I've experienced about Jesus. Now, good luck to you. Yeah. You know, that they they, they rooted that in, mm-hmm. the, in the community and they made these people, um, you know, a community that could function without. Right. Without them having to be there. And, and they and understood they, that that was necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so this, so, you know, that. It's interesting. They didn't just set up uh, a system of elders. They didn't right. just set up preachers. Right. But they set up a, a continuance of the sacramental system right. because even in the early days of the church. So we're talking before the year 90. Yeah. You have people that are, you have apostles that are going out to the parts of the known world. And they're not only preaching Jesus Christ. But they're yeah. also doing everything that Jesus said to do, yeah. wow. which is to celebrate the sacred mysteries. They yeah. understood mm-hmm. the ministerial and sacrificial nature of the priesthood, and that that's something is, that is something that doesn't just happen. Yeah. It's not just something you, like you pick, but it, it flows from Christ Himself. Right. And the fact that the apostles caught on to this mm-hmm. and then began to make it happen, right. right, through through the laying on of hands by ordaining. Right. That means that they understood that that role of no the, the Catholic Church is not just meant for for one right. um, body of believers the chosen people in Israel mm-hmm. it's meant for everyone who hears the sound of my voice yeah. proclaiming Jesus Christ and says what is to stop me from being baptized yeah mm. yeah you know? when and when you look back at how the church began to take root you know and, and how it it wasn't something that you know three hundred years ago some guys got together and said hey you know, let's put on some fancy robes and, and <clears throat> throw some smoke around and call it a church, you know, right. but that it, you know, when you look even at, um, I'm thinking of, uh, the first apology of St. Justin Martyr, yeah. which was written He's in, describing. The, in the year 155 AD, mm-hmm. look it up. He describes the mass, you yeah. know, he says, um, I pulled it up because I, I shared it with my class, but you know, he, he talks about, um, you know, how they, how they do the readings. And then somebody, the president of the assembly, mm-hmm. you know, gets up and, and shares about the readings. Oh, that's a homily, <laughs> you know, and then they, they, you know, um, they then bread they and wine thanks. and water yeah. are mm-hmm. brought forward the offertory, mm-hmm. you know, and then if the wealthy, if they wish, they, they make a contribution. That's, that's, that's like the, the, the collection, the gifts, that's right? right? And yep. then he talks about, um, you know, the communion and, and this mm. is, this is, um, I don't, I wonder sometimes if the apostles had any idea, and I don't know, maybe this is a theological discussion, but, um, like if they had any idea that when they went out there, they were like, well, mm-hmm. <laughs> here we go. You know, they had any idea that this was. Yeah. I, you know, I think that the, the linchpin for them was the, the falling of the spirit upon them. Yeah, Cause if you remember yeah, in the acts sure. of the apostles, um, and in Luke's gospel, whenever the Lord breathes on them mm-hmm. and he says, receive the Holy Spirit, not only gives it, he gives them the mandate to, to forgive sins, right? right? Whoever sins you forgive are forgiven. So he reinstates the, or re, he reiterates the power of the keys that he gives to yeah. Peter to bind and to loose. But he also then opens their minds to understand the scriptures. Yeah. And the thing that they understand is everything that referred to Jesus and so you're even thinking of the priestly functions of the Old Testament, mm-hmm. right? The, the temple functions of the offering of the sacrifice. They then begin to, to understand the history of that, yeah. the prophecy contained within that, and then how it refers to Jesus Christ and what he then was going to require of them. Yeah. And so that's when they go out from that upper room. And again, this is how the Holy Spirit works. They have an, an understanding. Maybe they don't have all the pieces together because sure, yeah. mm-hmm. we see that even Paul is having trouble kind of getting things to take root in some places. Right. But they understand that their role is to draw everyone into Christ through the celebration of the Eucharist because that's primarily yeah. where we come to encounter him after our baptism. Mm. You know, uh, And then again, inside of a century, you have Justin yeah. Martyr 
who is saying that the same things that we do today, they were doing then. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned uh, Saint Paul when when I think about how you know when when they you know establish a, a local church and then he left that community mm-hmm. he uh, that's that's the majority of the new testament is his letters to those communities encouraging yeah. them yeah and so i think and some, saying listen to your bishop <laughs> yeah right and like being and, and setting and like you know it wasn't just good luck to you and, mm-hmm. and i'll be on my way i got other things to do it was a true you know, sense of universality that this, yeah. you're not alone. Right. And you may, you may feel like it and you may be struggling as a community with this or that or the mm-hmm. other, but this is what's going on over here and over here. And I think about this guy did this, you know, a few years after, after, you know, Jesus died, there was no Facebook, yeah. there was no YouTube, there was no TikTok. you know, and, and when we talk about how we evangelize through, through digital media, mm-hmm. I'm thinking if we, can't do that well like this dude did it with pen and paper like, that's right you know, yeah scroll and a couple scroll, of secretaries yeah. you know and and so so how much more responsibility do we have right. to to be a, a truly universal church and mm-hmm. if you know we are uh, and i'm going to paraphrase this but somewhere i heard it in a, i might have heard it here um but we are the most connected disconnected society that there is yeah because i can i can talk to someone in china in two seconds Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right now if i wanted to we're doing it right now yeah yeah but you know hello to the communist party in china monitoring us (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but you know are we are we truly connecting with people yeah you know in the way that we are universal in our church that's right you know can we speak to um you know even with this program like can we speak to the church universally, mm-hmm. which I think is something that we do. And we we do. try to. Yeah. And then, of course, one of the contentious things mm-hmm. about uh, calling the church Catholic um, is, is what does it mean in, in regards to the, the lowercase c, you right. know? Um, in, in the document Nostra Aetate, which uh, is, is one of the, the documents kind of um, on the declaration right. of the relation of the church to non-Christian religions, as well as in Lumen Gentium, we get these understandings of, of who the church understands herself to be. Right. And you get in um, in the Second Vatican Council documents in Lumen Gentium the notion that the the various, we would call them son or daughter churches, the ecclesial communities um, that certainly exist well after the 1500s. So, so mm-hmm. remember that the Catholic Church uh, was, is the Christian church uh, until 1054, when that very first kind of break happens, with, uh, with Constantinople, and we have now what we call the Orthodox Church, right? Uh, and then in the 1500s with, um, with Martin Luther and then what would become the Protestant Reformation, mm-hmm. you then have this, this kind of splintering effect that begins to happen um, from, uh, from Roman Catholicism, from Rome, and we'll talk about that in the next mark. But this notion of Catholic, well, what do, you, what do you do when you have a whole bunch of Christian churches that yeah. have a common baptism? We share baptism with those who baptize in the name of the Trinity. So what of it? What, what do we yeah. do? And, and there are even other churches uh, or ecclesial communities that use the Nicene Creed. Well, the way that the church understands herself is that the, the Catholic church um, is, is indeed the, the very first, if you will, the first uh, church that was intended by Christ. And then all of the other um, churches subsist within the Catholic Church, yeah. and it's uh, it's it's one of those things that's very contentious for many. But there has to be there has to be a prime mover here, you right. know, mm-hmm. and uh, and of course God is the one who sets the church into motion yeah. by the mission of Christ and and by the mission of the Holy Spirit. And so whenever we talk about this, subsisting is a special case of being, um, meaning that. Uh, that something that's kind of standing on its own, but at the same time stands because of something else. Right. And and so that's when we talk about uh, those who perhaps profess the Nicene Creed, there is a sense of unity of Christianity within there, even mm-hmm. though they may not recognize the primacy of Peter uh, or recognize it yet, yeah. you know, but yeah. but um, there there's kind of a, a great, and so graces can be given to these ecclesial communities that uh, consider themselves Catholic in the small C yeah. sense. Um, but it's, it's worth noting that, uh, that what the church does not believe and never has believed is that one religion is just as good as the other. Mm. That, that has never been the belief of, of the Catholic church. 
and it really has is not the belief of many Christian churches either. Right. Um, that's called the heresy of syncretism, where you know a Buddhist is the same as a Catholic is the same as a Muslim is the same as an evangelical is the same as a, an atheist. Yeah. We don't believe that that all of those things are the same, and and so there is this uh, this this beautiful kind of interplay into trying to go deeper into what it means that that we're called to be one holy and Catholic, yeah. you know? And then connected to that would be the fourth mark of the church, right. apostolic. The church yeah. is apostolic. Mm. And this is one of those that you can kind of stumble over a little bit as you're getting to the end of the creed. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, meaning, as we've said, that Christ founded the church and entrusted his authority to his apostles. And especially during the Easter season, I always marvel at this. Yeah. That if you think of the guys that, that Jesus could have chosen to give authority to in the church. Yeah. Um, first of all, I would think he would have picked his mom, mm -hmm, right? <laughs> you know, like he would have handed on the keys to her. Sure. Um, and yet, no, he didn't. He chose, he chose very broken men mm -hmm. who had only recently, you know, just betrayed him. Yeah. And in the case of Peter, where he, he tells him well before the betrayal, right. um, no, it's going to be you, Peter. You're going to be the, the one on whom I found yeah. my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Yeah. Um, and it's because you're going to hold fast to that confession of faith. The church is apostolic because Christ specifically chose right. apostles, those who would be sent out, who would be his witnesses. Yeah. And, and so when we talk about the, the church is apostolic, it's founded on those apostles who are our first bishops. Yeah. And so we, we call St. Peter um, the, the first pope, and right. he became the bishop of Rome. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, not the bishop of Jerusalem. That's a whole nother show that we could talk <laughs> about as to why he didn't stay in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But he goes to Rome. Yeah. And, uh, and it is, of course, from Rome that, uh, that Christ's um, representative, if you will, his vicar, Right, that's what a vicar is. So, like all those folks who live vicariously through their children at school, yep. right? Um, the the pope is is the representative of of Jesus's ministry on earth. Why? Because Christ handed his ministry to Peter, yeah, and he gave he gave divine authority to a human being. Yeah, yeah. I I love when we look at the apostles. And I've spoken many times about my love for Peter, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my yeah. my kinship with with Peter, <laughs> the big dummy, because I mean he just always was, you know. Yeah, headstrong. But, yeah, and but you're talking about this this group of mostly young. That's you right. Know, I'll, oftentimes the apostles are depicted, you know, depicted as being very old. Yeah, that's, with like white yeah, hair. By the time they die, that's yeah. <laughs> in some cases. You know, and and you're right. Like not a one of them, except for one, not a one of them mm -hmm. is is mentioned in the passion of Jesus mm -hmm. as being present there. Now, now we had this discussion with, with my students. Could they have been there? Sure. Mm -hmm. Could they have been lurking in the shadows? Maybe, you know, but they weren't, they, they, they weren't. But, but we know that only John right. was, was by the side of the cross. And who, and cross. who else yeah. was there? Mary, mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene, yep. right? The woman of Jerusalem, you know, all, all these other people. And, and yet Jesus said, you young men, yeah, you're it. Yep, you right. specifically, you 12. Even the yeah. one who would betray him, he yeah. didn't retract his desire to make him an apostle. Yeah. yeah. Right? He he did so in good faith. Yeah. Um and and that's that's really the that's Cardinal, a Cardinal Sorrell has a very beautiful reflection, beautiful reflection on that. <laughs> you should uh, read it. And I'm, my pick for the week last week. But but you know, yes, and and they were they were um they were good men, mm -hmm. right? And they, they, it wasn't like they had been formally educated. No, many right? of them hadn't. Many of them had not. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't spent decades with Jesus. Nope. At max, three years. At max. That's right. At max. Like, and and they're, what's beautiful about about who they are is that they sat at the, at the feet of Jesus mm -hmm. and they learned from him mm -hmm. and they, they knew it was important to be with him, yep. not just to listen to the words he said or to say, Hey, I'm, I'm, I am, you know, cause oftentimes they did not, but I am one of those guys who follows Jesus. Am I following him right now? No, he's mm -hmm. been gone for a few weeks, but they, they recognized the, um, what it was, the, the cost, need, the yeah. need to be n close to him. Mm -hmm. And to follow him in in such a way that they were in, in the physical presence of him, 
you know, for three years. And that, you know, no matter what, oftentimes they off, they didn't understand what he was saying. Yeah. You know, they were like, what? But they still knew where their place, like where they needed to be. Yeah. And, and that, uh, that's a, a beautiful, uh, reading whenever you, uh, open up the, the letter of John, mm-hmm. he says, we declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, yeah. what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and yeah. testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. The yeah. apostles wanted their joy to be complete only when they had spent themselves for introducing you to Jesus Christ yeah. and therefore God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so when Jesus uh, imparts apostolic authority onto them mm-hmm. um, by, uh, by ordaining them, right, yeah. that then flows on down to our present day. Yeah. And, and that is what we talk about whenever we say that the church is apostolic, namely, too, that that once the last apostle dies, when mm-hmm. John, the beloved apostle, d- dies around the year 93 to 96, something like that. Because it's important to note that besides John, mm-hmm. every other apostle was martyred. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they knew what they were getting out there for. Within the first 90 years of the church, yeah. you know. And so when John dies, we understand that the deposit of faith is is sealed and concluded and complete. Yeah. And so what the apostles then are, are, their successors are doing is they are holding up the sacred tradition that has taken place up until the death of the last apostle. Mm -hmm. And they have taken certainly the scriptures that Mm -hmm. that they are using in their churches. And then that then becomes the kernel that is handed down. That becomes the traditio, the handing down. And so everything that the church does even today in 2021 is a reaching into that deposit of faith that yeah. comes to us through Christ and through those original, we can say 12 apostles because Matthias mm-hmm. was the replacement, yeah. you know? And so then everything since then has been an unfolding and a deepening of our understanding of what is given to us in yeah. our sacred scriptures, but then the sacred tradition from which the sacred scriptures come. Yeah, That could be a show in and of itself too. Yeah, write that down. Write that down, Jeff. We can do that, yeah. So our church is one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think that we can get out of this program without uh, taking some time for that part of the show, Jeff, that we often, without fail, like to call. The CU Pick of the Week. I didn't warn him ahead of time we'd be doing a oh, pick no. of the week. but oh, He's uh, just that good. Yeah, they're just that good. Yeah. All right, Kathleen, we got a few minutes left here. Okay. So. You over where? Oh, okay. By the you. way, before you start, Kathleen, mm. yeah. Olivia was going to be first today. She but was. She uh, decided not to be here. So. She did. Well, you snooze, you lose, so Olivia. There you go. So sad. <laughs> Hope you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> if you are like me, um, you have missed going out into the world, and so um, a few weeks ago, uh, my sweet fiance surprised me, and he, with when he said, "Would you like to go to the movies?" and I said. What is this movies you speak of? <laughs> I and I said, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> and I knew immediately why he wanted to go to the movies because the new Godzilla versus Kong. Oh, he's one of those. King, is King he? Kong was out. Yes. And so then we ah. had to watch several of the Kong movies uh, before to oh, preface to, it. To, to pregame. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay. I never watched any of them. I was like, I don't know about this. Awesome. I don't know if it was because really? I haven't been in the movies in so long. And yeah. I was... I was Did you watch pu- like the really old ones? No. Oh. oh. I don't know if it was because I was punch drunk on buttered popcorn. I don't know. I have no idea. That's my but vote. it was yeah. so good. It w- it was well done. The storyline was. Um, I know that there were several before, but I didn't feel like I was out of the loop. Okay. Um, we can't all be Mothra. Kathleen. No. Uh, they had some really great uh, Molly Molly Bobby Molly Mommy Molly Bobby Molly, Brown from Stranger Things. She's oh. got like three names. Oh, okay. Millie, Millie Bobby Brown. Um, Alex Skarsgård. Sarsgard. Love him. Scar Scar Sarsgard. There's a K in there. Is there. Yep. Is there I don't know. I don't. We'll Google it later. Anyway, great <laughs> cast, great story. I cried a little bit. I Come can't stand on. when you know, when a big gorilla gets bullied. It is Skarsgard. I don't like it. But anyway, great movie. 
go to the movies and enjoy see yourselves. That, that, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Do so safely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. My pick of the week is a book that is, I believe, out of print, but I've, it's been on my shelf. I've had it. I don't know where I got it. I've had it for years. It's called The Apostolic Parish. Nice. You can get it, um, you know, at, at booksellers that, that have used books and things like this. It's uh, by the fine folks at PJ Kennedy and Sons. And uh, Father James Navagh, mm-hmm. I hope I got that right, N-A-V-A-G-H, um, who then became Bishop James Navagh. I've, I've, I've done a little research. Um, this is a fantastic little work. Typic- it's written for a priest, for uh-huh. like a, a new priest or even a, a, a seasoned priest. Yeah on what his parish should look like and act like and be Mm. like. Mm. And so like before there is rebuilt and before there is, you know, the amazing parish program, there's this guy, the apostolic parish. Mm. And I say it was written in 1950, but I mean, it really could have been written yesterday um, because the, the things that, uh, that, that he wants uh, that he says, if you want your parish to work, this is what you should do. Right. um, Then uh, it's, it's still the, it's still true today. Um, he says, in any consideration of pastoral work, first thought must be given to the part which God plays in the work of a parish. Pastoral experience will teach you nothing more effectively than the stark, simple truth of our Lord's words, without me, you can do nothing. And we priests need to hear that. But mm-hmm. sometimes I think our laity need to hear it as well, because yeah. we think if we just add another program, if we just do one more thing, and then, right. then we're going to become, it's going to be money. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it actually comes from following the Lord and uh, from doing what he asks. And so this is a beautiful little reminder. Um, uh, Father James, or I should say Bishop James Navach. Hmm. I think I'm murdering that. The Apostolic Parish. Out of print, but you can find it. And wouldn't it be great if it uh, came back in print again? So are you listening, Ignatius Press? Sophia House, Tan? Mm, This would be a great one. I don't know Mm -hmm. if it's out of copyright. It was 1950, so I, yeah, I think maybe. I don't know. I can't remember copyright. I don't know how that works on it. I don't know who either. copyrighted it either. Um, yeah. it's well, what about the uh, Vatican II thing? Does it uh, come into play here? I mean, uh, this was before the Second Vatican yeah. Council. So, but matters not. Okay. Still, that's what I'm one apostolic about. parish is one holy Catholic and apostolic today as it was then. So, yep. man. All right, uh, Jeff, uh, you didn't have a pick of the week, did you? I did, but we, it can it can wait. Sorry, I talked too long. No, 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 no. It's as always, always the yes. Catholic Underground is made possible by viewers, <laughs> by listeners, by prayer warriors, and by benefactors like you. If you want to become an official undergrounder, you can always do that by going to catholicunderground.com slash donate. You got it. You can also help us out by letting others know about us. Isn't that right, Jeff? Oh, yeah. Like us, heart us, and, uh, and star us on yeah. your platform of choice. And uh, for those who can leave uh, a, re- a review, say something nice. That would be nice. We would yeah. appreciate yeah. that. Uh, allow me to say something nice about our panelists. Kathleen Lee, <gasps> her hair looks great. Oh, yeah. thanks. I was a little nervous about it today. <laughs> you got your do, dear. I'm growing it out. <laughs> She's at Kaylee626 on Instagram. Also, mm-hmm. Jeff Blackwell is our technical director. He's at Jeff Blackwell us on the Twitter. Yes, always a privilege, Father. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, also, Ed Ball has been our video director. He is nameless nameless on social media and that's probably how he likes it jim hayes is our research assistant with his crew in the lab and you know me i'm father chris decker i'm on digital catholic at digital catholic on all the things yep you've been listening to the catholic underground cutting through the noise so that you can find that still small voice we hope we've helped you and we certainly will see you next time Catholic.